Is it just me or do you think that home theater and multi-channel audio, all that stuff is just too complicated? You know, look, if you look at the back panel of a typical thousand dollar AV receiver, the numbers of inputs and jacks back there, it looks like you could, you know, have like lunch space shuttles or something with the thing. It's a home theater. It plays music and movies. It's why are these things so complicated? So I'm reading the July August issue of Sound and Vision magazine, great magazine. And specifically I'm reading Tom Norton's review of the new NAD M17 surround processor. It costs six thousand dollars. It's just a surround processor, it's not an amplifier, it's just a preamp processor. I'm literally scratching my head. I'm thinking about NAD back in the day, a long time ago, when it, when I fell in love with the NAD 3020. It cost $175. It was super simple to use, sounded fantastic. Put that company on the map, at least here in the United States, and 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 was the first product for many, 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 many audiophiles. It was unbelievable how good it was, how beautiful it was, not aesthetically beautiful, <laughs> but just the right product for the right time for the right group of people. Amazing. NAD uh, is still an incredible company, but I think this idea of making products as complicated as this, I th uh, Tom, Tom Norton wrote this review and he called it a versatile and complex device. Now, mind you, Tom Norton isn't like me. He loves home theater. He's been writing about home theater for over 20 years, probably even a lot, a lot of years. He found it an incredibly complex and versatile device. What does the average person who buys this thing, the average dentist or lawyer or you know subcontractor, what? How, how do they even cope with the versatility of this thing? Again, we're just going to watch movies, right? movies sound maybe some music or something why are these things so complicated now I will quickly add that Tom Thor Tom Norton <laughs> Tom Norton loved sound was very impressed with it overall he had problems with its ergonomics I mean he, he thought it was ergonomically clumsy here and there but it, it, I'm just using this as an example I'm not really just picking on the NAD M17 V2 I'm just saying home theater has gotten at a hand in terms of its complexity and versatility. It has to have, seems like manufacturers think they have to have every freaking processor and algorithm it has to be jammed inside that box, you know. Really? Don't you think most people are going to play their, let's say for movies, they're going to play them in DTS or Dolby and they're going to pick one format that they like at most. And that's it. They're, they're not going to go through 47 variations. I think some people are. But, you know, all that stuff they jam in the box, it's not free to the consumer. They, there are royalties and licensing fees that are paid to put those things in the box. And if most people, if 90% of the people who buy a product like this never use all those features, and yet are paying for them. It just seems like a, a big waste. It's a huge waste, in my opinion. Now, if you're a home theater guy and you love that all those features are in the box, sure. First of all, I want to hear all about it in the comments section below. But if you're the, on the other side of the equation where all of these features aren't just benignly there, they've costed you money, but they also make it using the thing as Tom Norton expert home theater reviewer found it harder to use because it was just too clumsy in its in its uh, in use I think so but as always I like I want to hear from you guys uh, what you think of this of where we've come to in home theater now <clears throat> maybe that's why most people have bailed on AV receivers and now he use sound bars which are vastly simpler devices now Unfortunately, soundbars don't sound as good as a decent 
AV receiver and five speakers or <coughs> seven speakers and a subwoofer. I think the, the chasm between what's available from even a really nice sound bar and a decent receiver and a bunch of speakers in a room well set up. I think that's that's huge. And if you love movies and you love movies with special effects and all that stuff, springing for an AV receiver and you know clawing your way through the instruction manual and setting it up to work the way you need it to work, it, it is worth the effort. <clears throat> but on something like an NAD M17 V2 that costs $6,000 and presumably you're gonna have to spend at least that much on a multi-channel amp to use with it, plus all the speakers and subs and wiring and et cetera, et cetera, <clears throat> Is it too much? That is the question. I don't mean too much money. I mean too much stuff, too many hoops to jump through to use the freaking thing. That's why in, there are installers out there who make a living helping their customers learn all this stuff, and presumably they do all the setup chores. But at the end of the day, after they've left your, your house or apartment and you're stuck there looking at a remote trying to make their thing work, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, my name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. You can follow me on Twitter at Audiophiliac Man. And you can subscribe to this YouTube, YouTube channel. And when you do, please hit that little notification bell. And you can like these videos, share them, do all that social media stuff. If you really like it and you've gotten this far in the video, check out the Patreon. The Patreon can be found at p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash audiophiliac. Thanks for watching.